America is a land of many different and wonderful places. There are vast forest lands in the east and seemingly endless grasslands that spread miles across the prairie lands. On the northwest coast, there are miles of shorelines, towering mountains filled with tall trees. While in the southwest, the land is dry and uneven with plunging canyons, sharp cliffs and hills. For thousands of years, these lands were home to Native American people. It was on these lands they hunted, built homes and raised families. Today, I would like to share with you the story and the history of the Native Americans, the first Americans. One way we've come to know about early Native American culture is through artifacts dug up by archaeologists. Artifacts are things like pottery, jewelry, and tools. By exploring artifacts left behind, we can learn a lot about what life was like for the first American people. You may wonder, how did the first Americans come to live on this land? Well, many scientists believe that thousands of years ago, much of the Northern Hemisphere was covered with huge sheets of ice called glaciers. This was the Ice Age. The cold temperatures caused more and more water to freeze and the level of the oceans dropped. When this happened, a land bridge crossing the sea between Northeast Asia and North America was revealed. Bison, caribou, and other large animals crossed over the bridge and the Asian people who hunted these animals and depended on them to survive followed. The people settled all over North America and formed groups or nations, becoming the first Native Americans. Some of these people settled in the Pacific Northwest. Others settled in the deserts of the Southwest. Still others settled in the Great Plains. And some traveled east and settled deep in the woodlands. Let's explore what their lives were like and how where they lived affected how they lived. First, let's explore Native Americans of the Eastern Woodlands. Each woodland nation had its own name. They were called the Algonquin, the Iroquois, the Wampanoag, and the Cree. Each people had their own customs. A custom is a special way a group of people do things, but each shared a common bond, their respect for nature. And nature provided everything the Native American people needed to live. Many different nations settled in the woodlands of North America. The trees of the forest provided them with materials to make homes or shelters to protect themselves from the weather and the animals. One type of home some woodland people built were called wigwams. Wigwams were built out of trees and bark from the surrounding forests. Their round shape protected them from every kind of weather condition, from rain, wind, and snow. Families would build fires inside their wigwams. The fire was used to heat the home and for cooking, too. Other woodland people built homes that could hold several families. They lived in a larger type of house called a longhouse. A longhouse was also built from trees. A longhouse was supported by long poles and covered with bark from the trees. They, too, like wigwams, had rounded roofs, but longhouses were much bigger. Inside a longhouse, there were many fire pits, which kept the longhouses warm and were used for cooking as well. Above each fire pit, there was a hole in the longhouse roof to let the smoke escape. As many as 30 families could live in one longhouse. Each family had their own space to live, sleep, and store their belongings. Woodland people lived together in villages. Woodland villages were built near a river or stream, so the people would have easy access to water and fish. To protect their homes, many woodland peoples built walls around their village. Some constructed palisades. Palisades are walls that are 10 to 12 feet high and made out of wood poles from the forest trees. 
The men of the woodlands also had to be skilled at taking materials from the forest and making the tools they needed. Using a small hammer-like tool made from a deer's antlers, men would chip away flint to make sharp arrowheads. Rope, too, was important to Native Americans. The men knew that certain fiber plants that grew wild in the woods would be woven into strong ropes for lashing and tying. The women of the woodlands had many skills as well. They were excellent farmers. They planted seeds and harvested crops. In addition, women took care of the homes and children. At an early age, they learned to make beautiful handcrafted baskets for carrying and storing food. Women also used their weaving skills to make large fish nets for fishing. The women also shaped and molded clay to make pottery that was used for cooking or holding water. And when it came to preparing and cooking the family meals, the women and girls of the family took on that chore as well. Food was cooked over a fire in a clay pot, on stones found in the forest, or roasted on a stick. During harvest seasons, some food was dried and saved for the winter. Much of it was stored in a separate hut or pits, with storage built below the ground where it was much cooler. Listening to stories told by the native elders was also an important part of a child's education. Stories and songs about heroes and their adventures taught children about their past, their culture, and about good morals. Native Americans of the woodlands believed that everything had a spirit. Every animal, every tree, every rock. They held ceremonies to honor and thank these spirits. They would sing, dance, and feast inside the longhouse. The many nations of the eastern woodlands had their own traditions and celebrations and their own ways of dressing, but they all had one very important thing in common. They all depended on the gifts of the forest to survive. Now, let's explore the Native Americans of the Southwest. Much of the Southwest is desert. The Southwest is hot and dry. Rain almost never falls, and there are very few rivers and streams. However, despite the rigorous environment, many Native American people made their homes in the Southwest for thousands of years. These people formed groups or nations like the Hopi, Zuni, Apache, and Navajo. At first, the Native Americans of the Southwest found shelter in caves. Then, some people began to form bricks out of clay mixed with grass. It was called adobe. They used these bricks to build houses called pueblos. Pueblos were constructed on the sides of mesas. Pueblos were built with the help of everyone in the village. Men would build the structures, and women would put on the adobe. Small windows and doors kept pueblos dark on the inside. Inside it was cool during the day and warm at night. To get in and out of the adobe houses, ladders were used. The ladders were pulled inside when they weren't being used, and this kept unwelcome visitors out of their homes. Pueblos were like modern day apartment buildings. They could be built to stand up to seven stories high, and inside they were divided into many different rooms. Hundreds of people could live in one Pueblo. Each family had at least two rooms to themselves. As a family grew, more rooms were built on top. At the bottom of every Pueblo was a special round room called a kiva. Kivas were used for special ceremonies. Paintings of spirits decorated the walls. Men gathered to ask their spirits for a good harvest, to bring rain, and to keep them healthy. In the land of the Navajo, the people built a different type of home. It's called a hogan. There are two types of hogans, the male and the female hogan. The male hogan has two legs and is pointed at the top and is made of mud and sand. It is used for many ceremonies. 
The female Hogan is shaped differently. It is a round dwelling with a domed roof. The dome is covered with dirt and tree bark, while the outside walls are filled with tree mark and clay mortar. Inside, wooden poles about five feet tall line the walls, and above them is a framework for the ceiling, which consists of poles laid on each other in a circular fashion. The Hogan, because of its thick earthen walls, is cool during the heat of the summer and warm during the winter months. Men and women work equally hard to support their families. Men provided the food by planting squash, beans, and corn. Women helped in the field. Men also hunted for wild turkeys or rabbits. Women were in charge of the homes. They prepared the food and cooked meals. Corn was eaten at every meal, but in different ways. Native Americans knew over 50 different ways to cook corn. Daily duties such as fetching water, washing clothes, and cutting firewood were performed by women. Women also weaved baskets, made pottery, and created jewelry. Children helped with household chores. Young boys learned how to farm, hunt, and make tools from their fathers. Young girls would practice preparing food and cooking meals alongside their mother. The culture of the southwestern nations reflected the land around them. Clay pottery was decorated with paintings and carvings. They were called talking pots because the pictures told a story. Most clothing was made of cloth, although sometimes it was made of animal skin or fur. Some men wore skirts with belts and others wore pants. Women wore long dresses. The Southwestern spirituality reflected the people's peaceful nature. They believed in loving all people, plants, and animals. Now let's explore the Native Americans of the Pacific Northwest. people formed groups or nations with names like Tillamook, Haida, and the Coast Salish. These people settled in the Pacific Northwest region of North America. Villages were built near the Pacific Ocean, quiet bays and flowing rivers. Nature provided plenty of everything the Northwest Native Americans needed food, water, and wood for making houses, clothes, and tools. The land the Northwest people settled on provided plenty of food to eat. The oceans, bays, and rivers were filled with fish, seal, otters, shellfish, and crabs, so Northwest tribes mostly ate seafood. Salmon was a large part of their diet. Each spring, thousands of salmon would swim upstream in rivers. There were so many salmon that a man could catch enough to feed his entire family for one year. Men built long fences across the river made of tree saplings to catch the salmon. They also used nets and wooden traps. Fish eggs and fish oil were special treats. Women used them for cooking, seasoning, and medicine. Even though it was very dangerous, some natives hunted whales. A group of men would brave the ocean in a canoe. They used every part of every whale they hunted. The meat and skin were eaten. The blubber or fat was used for oil. The tendons were used to make rope. Northwest people also used the forests around them to hunt for food. Men used traps, clubs, and arrows to kill deer, elk, bears, and beavers. Their meat and fur were valuable to the nation. Women used the forest to gather wild berries, roots, and fruit. Northwest villages were built near oceans, bays, and rivers. A village always faced the water. A village consisted of a series of plank houses built in a row. Plank houses were large, permanent homes built of wood from the surrounding forests. The frame of the house was constructed of large cedar trees. 
Logs and wood pegs were used as nails. Wooden planks were used for roofs. The planks overlapped to keep out the rain. The outside of a plank house was decorated with paintings and carvings. Inside, curtains made of woven mats hanging on rods separated the plank house into rooms. In the middle of the house was a sunken living room. In the center of the living room was a fire pit. Families used the pit to cook food and to gather around. There were no windows, but there was one hole in the ceiling for air. The ceiling was low, so the entire home would stay heated in the cool weather. Each member of the family played an important role. The men provided food by hunting and fishing. Women were the homemakers. They kept the plank houses clean, washed clothes, and prepared all the food and meals. Women created a lot of the artwork. They wove baskets and mats and pounded cedar bark to make clothing or boxes and baskets. They gathered berries from the forest and dug for clams in the sand. Girls grew up helping their mothers cook, clean, and make clothing. Boys learned how to hunt and fish for food and how to chop down giant cedar trees for wood to build houses and canoes. They also learned the art of mass carving. Northwest culture reflected their history and the land around them. Totem poles stood outside every home and were important to the families. The carvings and paint told a story about the family living inside. The story could be about a family's history or an important event. Now let's explore the Native Americans of the Great Plains. We call the first people who settled on the land between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains and from Canada down to Mexico, the Native Americans of the Great Plains. The Great Plains consist of vast grasslands, sweeping valleys, rolling hills, and freshwater streams. Few trees grow in the Great Plains, so there is little shelter from the scorching sun. The plains can be bitterly cold in the winter and very hot in the summer. Some nations that settled on the plains are the Crow, Blackfoot, Comanche, and Lakota. Cultures varied among these tribes, but they shared one common bond. They all survived off the herds of the buffalo that roamed the land. The Great Plains people were nomadic, meaning they moved from place to place. They were constantly moving because the buffalo herds were constantly moving, and they depended on the buffalo to survive. Since the Plains people moved around so much, their homes had to be easy to take down, carry around, and easy to build as well. So families lived in teepees. Teepees were made of buffalo hides and poles, very light materials. They were easily taken apart, carried, and then set up again. Teepees were made by tying long branches together and then stretching buffalo hides across them. People lived comfortably inside teepees. The buffalo skins were durable against the harsh wind and weather of the prairie. The skins kept teepees warm during the winter and cool during the summer. The outside of a teepee was decorated with paintings. Each painting was unique and showed the personalities of the family inside. In the middle of every teepee was a fire pit surrounded by stones. The fire was used to keep the teepee warm and was used for cooking. There was a hole at the top point of the teepee. The hole allowed smoke from the fire to escape. One family called each teepee home. They slept on robes made of furry buffalo hides. There was also room to store baskets, extra clothes, and dried food. Members of the same clan lived in a village. Villages were small. This way, it was easier to pack up and move everyone and their belongings across the Great Plains. The people of the Great Plains relied greatly on the buffalo for food, shelter, and clothing. Men would leave their villages and go on mass buffalo hunts. 
They only killed what they needed and didn't waste any part of the buffalo. Men used bow and arrows to hunt buffalo and other animals. Their meat was used for food. They roasted fresh meat on a stick over a fire or boiled it with vegetables to make stew. The hides of the buffalo were used to make clothing or teepee coverings. But the hides had to be prepared and softened. Women would skin the buffalo, then stretch the hide across the ground with stakes. The flesh and hair was scraped off. Then the hide was washed in a stream. Bones were used to make strong weapons and tools. Boys learned to ride a horse almost before they could walk. Their grandfathers taught them how to use a bow and arrow so they would grow up to become great buffalo hunters. Men were the providers. They hunted for food and brought it back to their families. Girls were taught how to take care of a family. They learned by helping their mothers and grandmothers cook, make clothes, and take care of their homes. Women were the homemakers. They were responsible for setting up and taking down the teepees, gathering wild plants, and cooking meals. Women were skilled artists and made crafts and clothes for the entire village. The oldest members of the nation were sometimes the chiefs. They were considered wise because they had lived so long. Elders used their wisdom to settle conflicts within the nation. Their word was respected. They also passed down their wisdom onto the next generation of children and taught them the Native American way. Carving was another art form. Men carved pipes out of wood or stone. Women made clothes out of skins from buffalo, antelope, and deer. Men wore animal skin leggings, a loincloth, and a belt. Some men wore eagle feather war bonnets. Women wore deer skin dresses. Children wore the same clothing as their parents. Everyone wore moccasins on their feet. Moccasins were made of buckskin and sewn together by the women. The artwork, the clothing, and the beliefs of the Plains people allow us to peek inside their rich culture and heritage. Today we discovered how for thousands of years Native Americans lived off the land and the resources the different lands had to offer. We've seen how their lives were similar and different. They all had different cultures, different ways of doing things, and different beliefs. However, the one thing all Native Americans shared was their respect for nature and the valuable gifts they received from the earth.